you know, I grew up in Belfast, um, in Stramillus, St Ives Gardens, um, and I became an artist primarily because of the access that I had to the Ulster Museum. Um, I went to a school, to primary school through the 60s in the inner city, in the markets. And just as the troubles were starting, I moved to grammar school on the Falls Road. So I spent the next seven years, seven years, eight years of the 70s, traveling into the city centre and out to um, St Dominic's on the Falls Road. And that was a kind of a strange experience because um, you know, we were kind of stepping into a very troubled area and then stepping out of it. So in some ways it was um, a perfect situation for a, an artist. You know, you could observe things, but you still, you weren't being caught into the, the local politics. I went to art school um, in the early 80s, um, late 70s, early 80s, and I was really surprised that there was no, um, there was no, um, immediate discussion about what was going on around us and I mean looking back on that it was it was difficult for people to discuss these things because I mean there was absolute violence. I made a very definite decision to make work that was about my time and place and I also had the very strong belief that art somehow made us more human. It makes us more human. I'm still confirmed in that belief and the idea of art giving us a space, all of the arts giving us a space to become confused in. The good thing about, the good thing about visual arts in Ireland is that there were a, a group of women um, that I, you know, I, I, I kind of developed along with um, in Ireland that, that felt that the visual arts was up for grabs. Um, I mean, literature was very much dominated by men, um, but we wanted to make work that was not about, you know, female art, but that was simply art from our own perspectives. So um, obviously, as an artist, you're you're kind of particularly visually alert, and it used to intrigue me when we travelled um, across the border on our holidays, looking up at the the hill on that kind of um, entry into Ulster at Creve Kieran, or you know, kind of just there on the main kind of Newry to Dundalk Road. You know, I used to wonder what what could they see? Like, you know, could they hear us? And and then as a woman, the whole idea of kind of um, the gaze, you know, as a feminist, that was very interesting to me. And I mean, I was surrounded by this this sense of security and surveillance. So in some ways, it was inevitable that I that that those um, themes connected. I mean, those were themes that that seemed immediate and obvious to me. It wasn't that I kind of woke up one day. I, I had this notion that the, the art that we make should, should reflect a time and place. I mean, I, to me, a good artwork is off its time and place. And I'm not particularly interested in kind of um, fashionability in art. I, I feel much more passionate about um, art being a way of navigation for myself. And if it's of value to me, and if I can really genuinely kind of make work that has some authenticity for me, there's a chance that I can communicate with someone else. And that idea of making stuff that is so kind of um, unique and authentic to a particular place and moment, you know, that, that has the opportunity to kind of bounce off out into the universe and have some connection with someone else in a very particular time and place and moment. Quite often the conversations or the people that I met kind of uh, triggered uh, further art projects and one of the conversations I had with, with an architect um, who was responsible for the, the, the kind of reinvention of Armagh Women's Prison, an old Georgian prison that had been used up until the I think the mid 70s, late 70s and Immediately, I kind of was curious. I wanted to see inside the building, and I I managed to 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 get six prison doors, and the peace veil transpired, and that was really about a kind of creating a hexagonal internal space. Sometimes I I thought of it like a throat, and when there's violence, people don't get to use their voice. People are afraid. 
when you intimidate someone or when you kind of strike out at someone, you're less likely to get, have any sort of respectful rapport. And it seemed to me that um, that was a situation for a lot of people in Northern Ireland, that because of the violence, they were afraid to say anything, they were afraid to speak out. And there was also, there was no one listening. Um, so grief and pain was internalised. Um, that piece of work evolved from those kind of heavy prison doors and it's, it's like a little ark that kind of floats on a bed of salt. And the salt is the, the kind of dried residue of tears. Inside there are little glass teardrops that I had um, made in the glass factory. And I really wanted to describe something of that internalised grief or that kind of quiet pain that our society is now, you know, kind of saturated in because of violence.